It is so important to capture your landscape images in a raw format. And many of us know that. But I want to demonstrate in a video today an edit session of a photo that I underexposed. And if I had not captured that as a raw image, I never would have been able to retain the detail, the color, the range of light that I was able to pull out of that image in my Lightroom edit session. Hi, I'm Tom Sloan. I'm a landscape and portrait photographer. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you an edit session that I did on one of my photos that I captured at Higgs Memorial Beach in Key West. This is a long exposure photo that I had miscalculated the exposure for. So it was grossly underexposed. In that Lightroom session, I'll show you how I was able to recover the details, the light, and the color that was in that image. If you find this video useful, hit the like and please subscribe. And if you have any comments, please leave them down below. I really appreciate hearing uh, feedback uh, on these videos. So let's hop right into the edit. Here we have the long exposure image of the old pier at uh, Higgins Beach in Key West. So this is a 191 second long exposure, and it's a rather dark image. This is a raw file, so I'm not too concerned with this, and that we can uh, recover a lot of the light and detail and um, color that was in the um, in the scene. I may have over underexposed this. I had an eight stop ND filter on my lens and uh, that way I probably miscalculated the exposure. But I'm just going to start with going into the basic slider or panel and moving the exposure slider over to about 140. So 1.4 stops. And then I'm going to do my typical edit. I'm going to bring down the highlights a little bit. Maybe about there, 35 looks okay. And I'm just going to open up those shadows and you'll start to see a little more detail in the, particularly in the water in the foreground. So I'll leave that around 46. Now I'm going to look for my white point. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and slide the white slider over. And so what I did is I took it all the way over until I started to clip and then I pulled back. Uh, to find the white point. Now I'm going to do the same with the black point, except I'm going to slide it to the left and hold down the Alt key. I'll leave it about there. That's uh, minus 45. Now what I want to do is add a little bit of vibrance to this. We go up about 10. Oh, 11. We'll just leave it there. And then saturation. I want to bring some saturation into this on a, on a global level across the image. Um, I don't usually go that high, but uh, for this image, I'm going to push it uh, pretty high up to 41. At this point, I want to also introduce um, the calibration slider, uh, the calibration panel rather. And I've been seeing a lot of videos and trying it out with some of my images and I kind of like the effect. It's a subtle effect where you can add saturation blues and greens into your images. Uh, and in this case, um, I'm going to slide the blue saturation all the way over to the right at 100. And I'm going to slide the green over maybe about 30%. Leave it there, about 28, and I'll just show you the difference here. It's a very subtle difference. I'm going to turn it off and on. So that's with the calibration with nothing being done, and then toggling it back on. It's a pretty subtle, but I think a dramatic difference. Okay, so to continue with this edit here, I see a lot of dust spots on this. So I'm going to 
quickly go through and clean those up. I'm going to crop this image and pull it up uh, and align the horizon to be in the top third. So now I want to add a couple of masks to this right now. One for the sky and one for the foreground. And I'll be adding a linear gradient to the sky. And what I want to do is bring down the exposure and bring it down negative 0.33. And I want to add just a touch of saturation to the sky. Just to bring out a little bit of that yellow, very subtle. And then maybe a little bit of dehaze. I don't like to go too high, around seven. It's good, that looks good to me. And now I'm gonna add a another linear gradient. And this will be for the foreground. And I wanna lift the exposure a little bit. around there. And open up the shadows a little bit as well. So I'm leaving that at a seven. And then just a touch of saturation, maybe at nine. I'll just set it. I think that looks, I think that looks good. I want to add another, I will add another mask, a linear gradient. Oops. There we go, create another mask. Linear gradient on the left side of this image. I feel it's a little too bright over here. So if I bring down the exposure It'll balance the image a little bit more. I'm going to take that down. Right about there. So taking that down to a quarter of a stop. So as I look at this image right now, I know that there's a lot of noise in this because of the long exposure and you can see it as I zoom in. I'm just going to go into the detail panel and I'm going to turn the noise reduction up to about 30 on the luminance. Okay, it's probably hard for you to see, but there's a big difference in um, the noise uh, reduction that came from that change. So now what I want to do is just show you the before and after of this image. It's pretty dramatic. That's the before. And that is the after. So I hope you found that video useful, and if so, hit the like button and subscribe. I will see you again in the next video.